Okay, I'd like to call to order the Township of Concord Township Council meeting for April 5th. If we could all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, yeah, if we can close that door, that would be appreciated. Thank you. Um, Concord Township Council met in an executive session earlier this evening to discuss a real estate matter. First item on the agenda is the approval of the public meeting minutes of March 1st, 2022. Do I have a motion to do so? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Any questions or discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Next is to approve. Nanny, you want to handle the expenditures for the month, please? Sure. So the expenditures are totaling $790,080.67. March payroll was $186,424.75. Current bills totaling $335,996.82. Sewer bills totaling $267,659.10. And that's a form of a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. At the, aye, call, aye. at the call of the chair, I'd like to uh, go out of order this evening, and we're going to go down to Roman numeral four of our program, which was recognition of many of the Garner Valley uh, high school teams and clubs. And we have a lot of them. We, yeah, we do have a lot of them here this evening. <laughs> and um, we're going to read some small proclamations, and then we will ask the members of each group or club to come forward and we'll take a picture up here at the podium uh, and that'll be the procedure. So we're gonna move down below, so we're down there, so when you come up, we don't have to keep going back and forth, okay? Now we are live. There we go. Okay, great. All right. Uh, first proclamation is recognizing the Garner Valley High School 2021-22 varsity cheer team. Whereas the Concord Township, Concord, uh, Delaware County is proud to recognize the achievements of young people in our community. Whereas the endless hours of practice and dedication have allowed for the 2021-22 Garner Valley High School varsity cheer team to achieve high honors. The varsity cheer team are 2022 Central League champs, District 1, small 1A champions, and PIAA, small 3A state champions. These victories are quite an accomplishment thanks to the support from their parents, community, and coaches. There are many, many names on this proclamation, and I'm not going to read them all. You know who you are, and we appreciate you being in Concord Township and doing great things for Garner Valley School. I have a motion to approve this resolution. Do I have a second? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. If you guys and your coaches and your supporters would come up here, we'd like to get a picture, please. Okay, uh, continuing in the, uh, I guess it's a Garnet theme tonight with all the colors and the Garnet Valley High School. Uh, we're recognizing that the um, 
endless hours of practice and dedication that have allowed the 2021-22 Garner Valley High School football team to achieve high honors. Varsity football team. The varsity football team are the 2021-22 Central League champions, District 1 6A champions who advanced to the semifinals in the state playoffs. Whereas these victories are quite an accomplishment thanks to the support from their parents, community, and coaches, I have a whole second page of coaches and players and everything else, but just like we did with the girls, if you would all please come forward, I would like to have a motion to approve this proclamation, please. Second. Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Just, Next proclamation is recognizing the Garner Valley High School 2021-2022 wrestling team. Whereas endless hours of practice and dedication have allowed the 2021-2022 Garner Valley High School wrestling team to achieve high honors. The Garner Valley wrestling team are the 2022 Central League champions, making them the Central League champions five years in a row and achieving a third place finish at the Boyertown Duels the third place finish at the Soutertown Duels, the third place finish at the Southeast Regional Tournament with four individual state qualifiers and a top 10 dual meet team in District 1. Whereas these victories are quite an accomplishment thanks to the support from their parents, community, and coaches. Do I have a motion to approve this resolution? Do we have a second? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Would the wrestling team come forward? Anybody? <laughs> All right. Uh, this one is very interesting because this is a game I like to play in the backyard. Recognizing the Garner Valley High School 2021-2022 Unitified Bocce team. Whereas the endless hours of practice and dedication have allowed the 2021-2022 Garner Valley High School United Bocce team to achieve high honors. Whereas the Bocce grade team are the 2021-2022 division winners and the Unified Bocce Garnet team are the Delaware County champions who also achieved the fifth place finish at the Eastern State Championship. Whereas these victories are quite an accomplishment thanks to the support of their parents, community, and coaches. Do we have, an author, uh, do we have a motion to approve this proclamation? Do we have a second? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. All right, will the Bocce players please come up? Okay, and uh, we have one more. We uh, just have one more. We 
Do you have the volleyball one there? Okay, I'll do the basketball one. I'll need the volleyball one. Okay, uh, recognizing the 2021-22 girls basketball team. The girls basketball team are the 2021-22 Central League champions who qualified in advance to the Elite Eight for the 6A District 1 tournament and qualified for the 6A state tournament. And whereas these victories are quite an accomplishment thanks to the support of their parents, community, and coaches. Do we have the basketball players here? We need a motion, please. Motion, second. Second. In favor, please sing the five saying aye. That's a good one. Mr. Mr. ESPN over here. Now, um, anyway, <laughs> Garner Valley High School 2021-22 varsity volleyball team. The varsity volleyball team are the 2021-22 Central League champs. Uh, we have many of their members here this evening. If they would please, we need a motion to approve this proclamation. Second. Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye if the volleyball team would come up. Also in the quarterfinals of states. No, no, no. T let everybody know. Okay. We didn't. No, no, that's all right. no, Amanda's not here. We were, up on. You were also in the quarterfinals. We were in the quarterfinals of states too, as well. Just sorry. Congratulations. To all the Garden Valley honorees, it is not necessary that you have to stay to the end of the evening. So if you do want to depart and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening, please feel free to do so. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we're going to proceed on to the monthly activity reports. Uh, Dana, you have a finance report, please. Yes, this is the quarterly update report for the budget. So the township auditors were in our office January performing field work relating to the 2021 financial statement audit. The township's DCED report was finalized and submitted on time. As in prior years, the auditors are awaiting final reports from PMRS relating to the township's pension plan in order to finalize and report on the township's full financial statements. PMRS has notified the municipalities that this information should begin to be available starting in June. After discussions with the auditors, there's nothing at this time that would suggest the township will not receive a clean audit opinion in the fiscal year end of 2021. Present 
Presently, operating expenditures are on track to meet our budget expectations. Operating expenditures are currently 24% of budgeted expenses. Operating revenues are currently 37% of budgeted revenues. Um, for revenue, we have a current year-to-date real estate collections totaling $1,446,323. This equates to 92% of the budgeted revenues and is slightly higher collection, rate collection of compared to first quarter of 2021. The township received a large real estate transfer tax payment in January due to the sale of Concord HRG retirement residences. It is anticipated that the real estate transfer tax revenue will be slightly higher than budgeted expectation because of the monies received from Concord HRJ. This expectation considers the rest of 2022 to be comparable to prior years and the total number of home sales occurring throughout the township. The township received reimbursement from FEMA related to COVID-19 expenditures through FEMA's relief grant program the reimbursement was totaling $20,785. For expenditures, capital projects are progressing. Reno Revenations of Township's second floor of the new record storage room is almost complete. Due to the help of our Public Works Department, the projects should come in under budget. Bids for the Community Center and Pierce Willits House will go out in the coming weeks and both projects should be on track to start late spring. Public Works Department has done a great job this year with our snow removal. Overtime for the department is higher than expected to this point in the year, but as a result, the savings of the contracted snow removal cost exceeds the overtime cost paid to the department employees. Expectations are that if there are no more major snowstorms to the end of 2022, overtime expenses should be close to budget and contract snow removal expenses will be under budget. For expectations, our finance department is working with the township engineers to track grant expenditures for all current capital projects. Um, our department is submitting requests for reimbursement when and where possible to all grantor agencies to keep the flow of funding for projects coming in on a consistent basis. Our sewer department is waiting on numerous parts and equipments to complete plan, um, plant and pump station renovations and upgrades. Hopes are that these upgrades can be completed by the end of 2022. The sewer department staff is ready to go with these projects as soon as the necessary parts and equipment is received. As a result of the increase in flow at the sewer plant, as well as the current expectation of future connections, the sewer plant is opening side B of the plant and will be running side A and B simultaneously. Presently, the plant operates one side at a time. It is expected that some of the operating costs for the plant will exceed budgeted expectations once they are running at full capacity. The sewer department will be monitoring certain costs closely, such as chemicals, laboratory testings, sludge removal, utilities, and equipment, plant, and maintenance. That is the report for this quarter. Thank you, Dana. And I guess uh, you have been doing the finance report every month for us, and we appreciate that. But I think every quarter you'll be giving us updates or as other things uh, come along during the course of the year, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you for your hard work. Public safety, Vanita. Thank you, Mr. President. Based on our monthly reports provided by the fire mark, uh, Provided by the fire marshal report of our Concord Township, we had a total of 43 incidents, of which most of them this month were related to health emergencies. We had 19 events where the emergency medical service team was called either for basic life support or an advanced life support incidents. Thank you to our EMS team, and we appreciate all of your hard work with <clears throat> all the emergencies. Our calls for the false alarm events was once again high this month, uh, more than should have been, and we urge all residents to please follow the guidelines and tips that were recommended by the township in our last meeting. We also increase, we also have seen increase in motor vehicle accidents this month. We urge and request all drivers on the roads to exercise safety driving practices, slow down, and be attentive. 
as an update to our ongoing public initiative, and as you all know, we have had requests from Pennsylvania State Police to consider the use of Plate Logic, a license plate recognition system for crime prevention and management. I would like to emphasize that this that as confirmed by Plate Logic in our last meeting, they do not sell this data to anybody. The data is only used by law enforcement, and we appreciate PSP's insight-driven expertise to meet the needs of our township. And it is our commitment to assist PSP with the tools they need in keeping our township and our residents safe. That's the report for this month. Thank, thank you, you Mr. Vanina. President. Uh, Mr. Gillespie, you have sewer and public works. Uh, yes, thank you. I have the monthly activity report from our assistant manager for the sewer operations during the month of March. The operations staff performed eight lateral inspections for resale certification during the month of March. Survey work has commenced for the Cambridge, Clayton, Smithbridge, Conchester area sewer project and notices were mailed to the homeowners included in the project area. A pre-construction meeting has been scheduled for the main plant pump upgrade project that will start in April. This project has been delayed, waiting on supplies and parts that were back ordered along with delivery delays related to the pandemic. And the operations staff has been working with a contractor to perform sewer easement clearing this spring to allow access to sewer manholes that are located in remote areas of the township. And additionally, the, uh, the sewer department, they have many, many daily, weekly procedures, many, too many didn't mention uh, at this meeting, the report will be included uh, with the minutes. And uh, over to the public works department, same thing dozens and dozens of activities per performed by our public works crew, notably on Bush Hill site, removing posts and rail fences, hauling trees, excavating trenches for water lines, the snack shack, painting the inside walls and floor, new windows installed, the bathrooms, the walls were repaired and painted, the countertop was designed and installed, the uh, ba bathroom walls and skylight areas were repaired, painted, and new main doors installed. Dog park, bench sun shades were reinstalled now that we're into the nicer weather. Records room in our main building here, uh, that's being improved. Scraping plaster walls, repairing and painting, and hanging doors. And many, many daily, weekly procedures. Too many to mention at this point, but uh, all good things happening in public works and in the sewer department. Okay, thank you. Mr. Crossan, you're going to need an open space, trails, parks, and rec, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we have a number of exciting events uh, planned for this uh, this summer and uh, spring and into the fall, uh, beginning with a recycling day and our tree giveaway is this Saturday from 8 to 11, uh, followed by the Easter egg hunt uh, from 11 a.m. on, at uh, 30, which is down at Bush Hill Farm. And then uh, in just a week or so, we have a bird watch nature walk um, at the uh, what was known as the Hall property there behind the high school, uh, now known as Small Brook Sanctuary. Uh, registration is required for that, so I, I encourage folks to sign up. But we have a number of activities, in, uh, including three movies this uh, this year, Encanto, Grease, and Godzilla vs. Kong, which we never got to see last year due to rain. Um, six concerts, uh, a number of, of exciting things. And our, our, our arts festival is back, as well as a steam expo in August. Um, as Mr. Gillespie mentioned, um, the Snack Shack is being updated. Uh, we are working on the surface uh, restoration, um, or the surface in the dog park, as well as uh, putting up fencing um, on the, some of our recent acquisitions over on Beaver Valley Road, um, as well as near the Chetty property in Bush Hill Farm. Um, we have some more trail updates coming later in the meeting, um, as well as uh, an update on the goats. Um, but um, the only other thing that I will mention uh, is that we did receive a letter from Morris Stroud, chairman of the Brenny White Conservancy and Art Museum, um, thanking us for 
uh, our work with them on the Chetty property conservation easement. Um, and uh, a special note um, of thanks from him that uh, this is such a great help. Uh, open space, as you know, provides such solace in good times and bad times. And uh, like your work at the township, our work at the Brandywine Conservancy is about satisfying today's needs while keeping an eye on the future of our area. Thank you, John. Um, Building and Code Enforcement, Colleen. Thank you. In March of 2022, um, we had 72 permits issued. That's up from 61 in March of last year, 2021. Um, the majority of that increase were in plumbing permits. And the other areas were all very consistent to prior years, such as building, mechanical, electrical um, permits. We issued 33 COs um, compared to 21 in 2021. A couple of our large projects that are going on in Maris Grove, Rose Court, the renovations to the building's interior are proceeding at a pace that is calculated to minimize disturbance um, to the residents and the staff routines. We also have the Astoria project that's at 100 Wilmington Westchester Pike, um, the MOVE Center that will be opening. It's a medical facility, primarily operating as a surgery center, joint replacement. Um, attached to which there are also eight overnight suites that will provide an optional stay for patients on an as-needed basis. Staff are currently working in the building on training and our fire marshal will be verifying the final egress procedures um, so that they may open that in the near future. And then as far as some other um, businesses that are um, on their way to the township or opening very soon, we have the Rally House that we'll be looking to open in Glen Eagle. I have no idea what that is, but I'll have to look. What is it? Sporting goods. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. A Lens Crafters, um, I'll need to find out where they are, <laughs> in Glen Eagle. A Solo Salon in the old Pier 1 at Britton Lake. And then we have um, on Baltimore Pike, Enliven Real Estate opening. Love Sack will be opening at um, Britton Lake. And Sephora in Glen Eagle will be opening on Friday. So um, it's good to see some, some businesses opening and some, some, new, um, some new attractions here for us. Okay, thank you. Larry, Planning Commission, please. Thank you. Uh, Planning Commission activities for March 2022, letter dated March 30th, 2022. The Planning Commission Agenda meeting was held on March 14th, 2022, and the public meeting was held March 21st, 2022. Good to see them having both meetings. Um, new projects, we have the Frail Zeckman Township project was accepted for review and project manager Jamer Doty and project co-project manager Sean Lawler were assigned. Projects, the planning, Commission recommended approval of the Concordville Hotel Incorporated lot line adjustment consolidation at 780 Baltimore Pike, Concord Township, and Frail <coughs> Zeckman lot line adjustment consolidation at Beaver Valley Road during the March 21st, 2022 public meeting. I believe the Frail Zeckman will be talked about later in the meeting, as that is one of our properties. Um, other, the Planning Commission re reorganization results were announced from January 10th, 2022 agenda meeting. The Planning Commission nominated Sean Lawler as chairman, Jamer Doty as vice chair, and Amy Capelli as secretary. These nominations were unanimously approved by the Planning Commission members. Uh, scheduled for this month, the agenda meeting will be held on April 11th, 2022, and the public meeting will be held on April 18th, 2022. Thank you. Uh, solicitor, Mr. Dunio. Yes, be advised uh, that township manager unfortunately is under the weather and cannot be with us this evening. However, she is presently conducting a survey of other municipalities regarding public participation in public meetings and public comment. Um, the results will be presented uh, to uh, this board uh, or this council uh, 
before the end of the spring. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Nate, engineer. We will do this at public comment. We will do this at public comment. Nate, your report, please. Yes, sir. We will do your the public comment. Settle. Articles 9 and 11, in my hands, have no words to that effect. Secondly, our HRC supersedes the NPC. Thirdly, Mr. Donahue has made at least two illegal agreements with 711 Concord Road, one a zoning hearing court appeal, another a township-initiated lawsuit with no public scrutiny and no adherence to township code. Two requests to help. One, on his report, could he start listing all litigation the township is currently involved with, what the issue is, when the start date of the litigation is, and what the status is. Doesn't seem to follow the HRC transparency, doesn't follow the Sunshine Act, Act. There's too much secret litigation happening, too much secret settlement. Why can't we disclose that? I, I still don't understand your question. This monthly report for the solicitor, right? I assume the township is involved frequently in litigation. Maybe I'm wrong. Yes, we are. We do get sued. So and we are part of litigation on sometimes. The monthly report, like started publishing the number of building permits. Why can't we say we've got five active cases of litigation? This address, this is what the suit is about. This is when the suit started, and this is the status. Take that under consideration. Okay, and I'd like to ask Mr. Donahue if he could clarify his false comment on 209B5. Happy to leave the two articles that he referenced in superseding. I have no words that he mentioned last Just, December. I don't, Terry. don't have a better answer now. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not going to, I've already answered your questions previously, and I'm not going to do it again. Thank you. Okay. Township Engineer, Nate. Sure, I'll, uh, just two brief updates. First, the uh, sidewalk as part of the Home 2 project uh, is substantially complete. Uh, that project extended sidewalk from the Home 2 Hotel on Applied Bank Boulevard uh, north to Baltimore Pike, connecting to a recently uh, completed township project that took it um, east and west on Baltimore Pike. So uh, happy to see that connection happen uh, to that bus shelter and to some of those retail establishments. Uh, second, as Mr. Crossan alluded to earlier, uh, we are about three-fourths of the way through the fencing project. We've completed the fencing uh, at Garris on 620 Baltimore Pike, the Frail Zeckman property, 40 Beaver Valley Road, as well as the uh, decorative fencing at the AME Church on Spring Valley Road. Uh, we still have some you know, TLC and cleanup at those sites, and then we'll be installing the uh, fence on the Chetty site in the near future as well to uh, round out that project. Um, otherwise, I think anything else I have is uh, an agenda item this evening. Okay. Uh, Township Manager, Terry, do you have anything to report, or Amanda's out? Nothing to report? I do think uh, Amanda let me know that there was no public comment received via email per the deadline, so I just want to add that into the record. Anybody else for public comment? Yes, please come forward. Can you name and address, please? This is one. Good evening, Dave. <laughs> Dave Cleary, 72 Schoolhouse Lane. Um, yeah, my son does play bocce, and we brought the question last year. We're looking out the door, though my yep. wife noticed. Yeah. We've played on the courts. Um, yeah, can you take the orange fence down? We're, I'll tell you, Dave, we're waiting for a surface to come in, 
and that's why we're going to get ready. They could uh, use a little bit better surface to play. Yeah, that, and we're using the same surface, I think, that was used at Marist Grove, and also there's another place that's using it. Yeah, it's not. I would say it's not complete. I understand Public Works has ordered the surface ordered, material. Yeah, the team coming. that was here tonight, as we talked last summer, they got nowhere to play except yeah, no, 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 set no, up. No. The, and yeah. I got to give our Public Works director. We were going to put the millings or whatever else was down there, and apparently did a lot of homework on it. And they just seemed to be more problematic. And this surface is the way to go. So we did order the material. We're waiting for it to come in. You, you should check with the high school. I think they're looking to put in courts. We heard we heard they're looking at the material we're going to use too. So we're sort of stealing that probably ideas yeah. You from should compare else. notes. It would probably so you end up with the most effective solution mm -hmm. at both. And it's going to be okay. Bocce City USA here in Concord. Mm -hmm. The original tournament they actually played indoors over at the Glen Mills School. Good. They set up PVC pipes on the floors. Fantastic. These outdoor courts will have a lot better play. Yeah, no, we're, we're very excited about them. And, and you know, it was a suggestion that came out of that uh, Wusher vision, and I'm glad we could. We're almost there. We're almost Michael's there. Michael's suggestion, yeah, yeah, remember that. Um, the, uh, the discussion tonight for Schoolhouse, my wife and I have said many times, and others have, We'd like a right turn off lane for southbound. And that doesn't come back up in any of the discussions that we've heard. Uh, no, I'm going to disagree. In fact, Nate, do you want to want to just do that report right now? That, well, let's, I'll let it get to there in the public comment. I'll state, and we think a traffic light will be problematic. The reason, the biggest constraint on the intersection is the illegal business up the street with dump trucks mm -hmm. and trailers. And the way they clog up the intersection, especially when they want to turn left, you close down that business and make them follow the zoning laws and stop hiding behind a solicitor that's got lame excuses. And our neighborhood's better and safer in the street my family lives on. And I think we have a right to that as citizens. Okay. I get you're all friends with the Capellis and they never follow the laws the rest of us have. Don't agree. You have the right to act like government officials. And pretend like you're beholden to the Capellis and you're not interested in listening to people like me and my wife that settled in this community. Just think that's fundamentally wrong and fundamentally wrong that you hide behind the solicitor every time we bring a good conversation to the table about that illegal business on our street. Okay. And I will agree with the gentleman here. The solicitor needs to be informing the public of the ongoing litigation and he took me to court, in my opinion, unlawfully, without the public vote, as that gentleman referenced, um, took me as a citizen for asking about that illegal business on my street through a legal process. He did not have your public vote before he went and signed his name on, behind, on behalf of Concord Township to open litigation against me. And he can bend and twist and say whatever he wants about the rules. What he did was wrong. And this gentleman's right. His conduct is not acceptable. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment? Yes, sir. Are you? HRS 40 Watkin Avenue? Yeah. Um, have you heard anything about the Woodlawn properties? We're still doing some uh, due diligence, but it seems to be speculation or if I were a betting man, I would think they settled on it. Yeah, we, we heard stories that they're buying the property because they've spent their, all the money on it. Could be. Uh, Could be. But my second thing is the new place model, or mode, whatever it is, the, the, the joint place across the street from Lockin Avenue. Oh, okay, yeah. Got a problem with their lights. Okay. I can't get a good picture of my house. Literally yeah. Walk in my house the shades are full closed, like, it looks like cold in my house. Hmm. It's all lit up. Okay. I don't think anybody took into effect that the reflection off the concrete and the glass, what it does at night. Okay. Now, we're, 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 we'll look at that. We have tried to be... Uh, when we get a land development plan, we always look at the parking lot lights, and we've been trying to incorporate a building lighting review into that because normally, and we have an architect here, sometimes the civil guy and the architect don't talk, and we end up with a lighting level on the building that isn't complementary to the one on the field. So, go ahead. Nate, you want to add something? 
John wants to sweep that. Uh, John wants to sweep that. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at that. I, I can tell you right now what that tells me is that. Yeah, if you come. My, you I don't even need to. I can see from that picture what's happening. I think it's, again, when we look at the plans for all these land developments, we're looking at the site lighting. But what doesn't happen here is the lighting under that canopy doesn't get into the mix on that. So we're going to have to approach them on that. I'm not promising an easy resolution. I will, I will take a look at this and see what we can figure out. I mean, I've watched them come up. And then they turn the down lights on one half, and they could just them off and just keep the column lights on. Okay, that's a, as long as we can kind of work together, be creative. You know, I don't think we can eliminate it. It's just a matter of trying to find something a little bit more. Fair enough. Sir, could I? The problem is could, the problem, the train is station the bottom of the mm -hmm. Before we move off the lighting, could, could, could you could you just um, let us know are the light is the lighting on in its full state throughout the entire night? Okay. And it doesn't shut down. Okay, thank you. Um, the problem the with that is the drainage ditch at the bottom of the street there for 30 years. Never looked. The gas ties came in and run the gas vein up to it to the place. Okay. Locked it. Didn't clear it out. Now it's as you can All see. Right. And then Bless it's you. trash left over from the work. Yeah, I th that's something. Yeah, I think two things on that exactly. Uh, there were some utility connections that were separate from this project. I do think what we'll do is most likely we'll probably repave Watkins next year as part of the road program once this project's complete. Uh, but we're aware of it. I know uh, Mr. Crossan has brought to my attention also. So we'll take a closer look at that as well. And then um, the other thing is going on with this the bird that's going on, the big outbreak in Delaware down in Newcastle. They were reading up. A lot of neighbors have checked guys keep an eye on this that just like a pet thing no. um john you want to handle it <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I just, yeah. thank you thank you for bringing that to our attention i mean we we don't particularly have any active monitoring of folks with chickens but um it's something for us to consider because i know like the, we got plenty of stray cats and i can't get the uh, the animal control guy to take care of the cats they'll take care of the dog yeah. now I'm just hoping the foxes get the cats. We have a, we have a few uh, we, 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 colonies we, in the in We're the not endorsing we're aware, foxes but, and uh, cats. No. You know, you, you do, do you live in a very rural area. Mark, Mark could you give um, Terry your contact information just so we can reach you back out to you if we need to connect with you on the move stuff? Thank okay. You. Thank you. Anything else? Mr. Goble again, please. Yes. Uh, 711 Concord Road, can somebody tell me why there is still a 53-foot shipping container in industrial debris on the lands of the grist mill, per the survey the owners did, per Mr. Donahue's agreement that was to have been removed in September. Why is it still there? You're saying it's on the grist mill property? Half of it is, okay. per the survey the owners had done. Um, you, do you have anything to shed on that? We'll follow, make a follow-up over there and be happy to look into it and get back to you next month. Been hearing that for, for several weeks. Uh, also, what's the status on the lighting there? Some of the lights have been fixed. Thank you very much. I wish I could show, you know, a little more gratitude. I really do appreciate it. But, you know, when it's been three years, hopefully you under, understand the frustration. There's still th three or four lights that aren't fixed. What's up? It's supposed to be done in February. Yeah, so uh, my understanding is they created, uh, they had to get some custom shields made for the existing lights. They have installed those, um, is my understanding. I've not reviewed them, not inspected it, but my understanding is those custom shields that they had to make, they just, there was nothing they could get off the shelf for that. That's been addressed. Uh, my understanding is a permit has been submitted to the Coast Department for the new lighting for the parking lot areas so they can remove some of those lights and put in the new lights. Okay, um, are, you re work, are you reviewing those plans? I will work with uh, Mr. Cavadias on that uh, to make sure everything's up to par. I, I wanna say that came in give or take a week ago, but. Time is moving quickly, so uh, that, that came in, so. So you folks were in court. The agreement Mr. Donahue made in the hallway that the judge uh, went along with was for everything to be done February. It's not. Some of it has been properly shielded. Thank you very much. The lights in the back on 24, or on all night, and shined up in the air, and, and uh, thank you for your help. Yep. Now, as you know, I've been to your property. I've seen the issue. I'm doing everything I can to resolve it. I, I can't. 
I can't make it happen tomorrow, Gene. Three years is three years. I didn't I, expect I, tomorrow. I didn't expect three years. Gene, as you know, I've personally been involved for less than a year on this, and I'm doing everything I can. I think we're at the finish line, and I don't want to screw up that process. I'd like to get us to the finish line rather than going back to court and causing new problems. Right, code gives them 30 days. If they don't get it done, they're supposed to, you know. Would you, would you like me to pause this and go back to court and have a discussion, or should we continue trying to get the lights Maybe installed? Maybe because okay. issues with these people are, are on for decades, right? For three years, they had diesel generators with illegal if you, refrigerators. Okay. I mean, it's if just you, If you don't on. want the lights, if, if right, you Nate, don't want the lights resolved, then just Nate, say so. Nate, you're going to review the lighting plan, and then we'll try to bring this to some sort of swift conclusion. Thank you. Karis, welcome. Haven't seen you in a while. Harris Coker, 836 Concord Road. And uh, there's, there are new plans for the property behind us, which is the property on Concord Road, and I understand that Harley Davidson is, has acquired the property. They're here tonight to talk. Welcome. <laughs> um, it's a perfect location for a business, and I wish them well. Just as a neighbor on the residential side behind them, and there are other neighbors uh, nearby. I just hope that in the plans uh, that are made that there's consideration that it is in that little V coming in between 322 and uh, Concord Road, there are residences yeah. nearby. But I yeah. wish them well in their enterprise. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other comments? Seeing none, we're gonna break with the agenda here a little bit and we're gonna move to, under other courts, council matters, Harley Hannum, Hannum Harley Davidson proposal for a sales and showroom. Mr. Jarris? Yes. Well, I, I wanted to get, we want to get this gentleman and his consultants out of here and then we'll get right back to the agenda. So go ahead, Mr. Jarris. Good evening, everyone. Uh, John Jarris. I'm here this evening representing uh, Hannams Harley Davidson as local land use council. Hannams Harley Davidson is represented this evening by Tommy Hannam uh, sitting in the rear. Uh, we also have several team consultants here with us this evening. Uh, we did, thank you for putting that slide up. Uh, Hannams is currently in control of a 5.5 acre piece of property located on the northeast side of Route 322, just to the south of Route 1, and across from Concordville Town Center. Concordville uh, Tire and Service Center is directly across the street. The property is currently zoned R2 residence district, and we abut the C2 business and commercial district to our north, which will become relevant in a moment. Uh, Hannams is proposing the construction of a Harley Davidson motorcycle dealership on the property, consisting of a 35,000 square foot building footprint to include a 15,000 square foot mezzanine along with attendant parking, lighting, and landscaping. The existing building shown on the plan would remain for administration purposes uh, to the right side of that uh, illustration. Uh, what you see on the screen before you is a conceptual site plan generated by AGI, one of our consultants, which depicts the proposed development of the site should the project move forward. I'd like to stress this is a conceptual site plan and is not meant to accurately depict compliance with all applicable area and bulk requirements, but is being shown in an effort to give you an idea of what my client is proposing for development of this site and how we envision laying it out. Uh, the township currently defines motor vehicle sales agency as a defined use in its zoning ordinance, and that definition would encompass this proposed motorcycle dealership. Motorcycle sales agency is permitted by special exception in the C2 commercial district. The proposed development uh, use is not currently permitted under the R2 residence district zoning. So consequently, we are requesting the township to consider rezoning this property and the contiguous uh, property to our south, owned by Mr. Mikowski, who is present here this evening as well, I believe, with his wife, to rezone that property to C2 Plan Business and Commercial District, which as I said earlier is currently located just to our north, and I believe the township has been considering this for quite some time. Uh, if the township were inclined to support this proposed development, the proposed rezoning of this property would be requested to move the C2 Zoning District line just to our north, uh, south, to encompass this property and the property just to the south of us owned by Mr. Mikowski. 
If the township were inclined to rezone this property, that is certainly not the end of the process. Uh, the proposed use is permitted, as I said, by special exception in the C2 district, and that would involve an application and hearing before the Township Zoning Hearing Board for the proposed use. If that application were approved with conditions acceptable to the applicant, it would then move forward to a fully engineered land development plan application to be reviewed by your planning commission and ultimately come before you for approval. I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Hannum to just come up and give the board a little bit of information about Hannum Harley Davidson, what their vision is for the proposed development of this property. And afterwards, we're happy to answer any questions council members may have with respect to the proposed development. Tommy? All right, thank you very much for hearing us tonight. I really appreciate it. My name is Tom Hannum, my sister Tonda, and my brother in law, John DePasqua, who are. Um, they are, live in Garnet Valley and their kids have just graduated through there. My sister's participated in the township in the past. Just wanted to note that. And she's the better half of our family, that's for sure. But um, so we have, um, we started 1954. I'll keep this real quick. My grandfather and father started the business. We have our original location near the Grand Run Mall and Media. We also have another location, in uh, Brandywine, Harley Davidson and Chad's Ford. We have a store in Rahway, New Jersey. We have a store in Electric City in Scranton. We have another store in Freedom Valley in Bucks County. And we have a new store over in Cherry Hill, New Jersey as well. Um, our desire would be to consolidate our media store and our Brandywine store. We've, a, we've gone through, Harley has gone through a consolidation program where they had 700 dealers nationally and they wanted to consolidate to around 550. So we're a part of that consolidation program where we've, Valley Forge, Harley Davidson went away, Chester Springs, Harley Davidson went away, and we were chosen to stay, but we had to modernize our facilities and, and make a new facility. So we were doing this at the right time. Harley Davidson just rolled out a brand new facility program April 1st, and they allowed us to use some of these conceptual plans. Um, we would be the flagship store of their new facility rollout. This is nationwide, so every dealership is going to have to contend with the new facility requirements as they go forward. And we would be very proud and honored to, to be that store. And we would love this location. It's fantastic. It's in, in between both of our existing stores. And we would love to see this be a part of our future. We'll be going on our 68th year of business this year. And we'd be proposing to hopefully op open this new location on our 70th anniversary. As you know, Harley-Davidson is one of the oldest American-made motorcycle companies in the world, in 1903, they started their company. And the one thing that we would really like to talk about is one unique feature of this would be a museum that we would acquire. Over the years, we've acquired 60 to 80 antique bikes, and we're actually acquiring another dealership now, which has been around since 1955 as well, and we're acquiring 30 to 40 antiques from them. So we would have the ability to, on our second floor to have one of the East Coast the most beautiful Harley museums that are out there. And I think there were some pictures from the Harley Museum. These are pictures from one of the dealers that we're acquiring um, that has a lot of antiques as well. And if we could rifle through some of those to get to um, a couple from the Harley Davidson Museum. And these are all 1941 flatheads, panheads, bikes from the 1930s. Uh, there's a 1919 that you'll see coming up soon, I think. Sorry. Back a little bit. There's some other pictures in there. Me. That showed up. Well, stop on that one. Go back. <laughs> no, the three wheeler. <laughs> no. All right. So here's this is, you know, part of the story. This is Ray Texter. It's Lancaster Harley. He raced that bike back in the 50s. They were wow. Lancaster Harley Davidson. And that's his son found that motorcycle in the 60s and restored it and gave it to his father on his 70th birthday. Um, and that's a part of our collection as well. So there's a lot of history. Um, so there are a couple other bikes in there too, maybe. So there was a 1919, there's one. So that's, that's a 1919 Harley that just went for $165,000 on one of the Mecham auctions. And these are the bikes that would be on display probably 60 to 80 antique bikes that would be on the second floor in a really modernized museum. The pictures that you're seeing are in warehouses and stuff and not a very modern facility. I thought there was some pictures from the Harley Davidson Museum. Didn't see anything else on there. All right. That three-wheeler, um, 
No, no, I, no, I, no, no. I was born and raised in Chester, and there was a Luke Motors. Uh, their service department used to have one of them. And when it, on the back it said Luke Motors, and when you would call to get your car service, the guy would come up to the house, and he would take the car, and he would put a hitch on your bumper and pull the motorcycle back. And that's how they delivered the cars to service. So I haven't seen one of them in a long time, but that was a, I remember as a kid always seeing that guy going around the city of Chester picking up cars to bring them to the service base. It was pretty interesting. And they make them now. They have a brand new 2022 model. Yeah. You'd look great on. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, the, well, the other thing I wanted to say is I was born in 1954, and now I realize how old I am, too. So that's not they good. Have a modern one. <laughs> Well, and I, I just wanted to say, you know, I, I know we're asking a lot, and this is great. It's going to be a nice project, but we've really tried to do our very best to entrench ourselves in the community, and I won't bore you with a lot of things, but at our Broadway store last year, we did a run to the Children's Hospital, and we raised $25,000 in cash for them, $15,000 in laptop computers for the kids before they go into operation, and two truckloads of toys. It was our 20th anniversary for the toy ride, and we understand that we got to a point where the toys were just too much. There was too many toys that we'd bring every year. So we found out that the children in the hospitals needed laptops and they needed cash to do certain things with. So our efforts are much broader than just going through toys for kids. Last year, Riddle Hospital, right in the middle of all the COVID, we did a big bike event down in their parking lot and raised $10,000 for the doctors and the nurses at the hospital. We've been involved in Brandywine Battlefield reenactments. We do charity events just about every other weekend. Uh, last year, the Eastern Harley Dealers Association raised over a million dollars for the Ride for Life for MDA. So we, we like to be good neighbors. We like to entrench ourselves in the community. We're just not there to do a business. We're enthusiasts, we ride, we love what we do, and um, we're very passionate about it. So we would love you guys to consider this and answer any questions. Okay. Hopefully that was brief, sorry. <laughs> We'd be happy to answer any questions. There was that site plan. Um, I don't know if it was, uh, we did try and locate it property on a couple other slides, but maybe they didn't make it. That's that's the only one. Oh, there we go. There we go. There obviously is the property outlined in red. It there, was there. There, there was it. the property. Yeah. That's the property we're talking about. Uh, Ms. Coker, we certainly understand your comment. And Mr. and Mrs. Mikowski, as I said, that is a conceptual site plan should the project forward we'll be in touch with you and other neighbors as well uh, okay. with regard to the that's a dancing slide presentation John, I guess uh, the big thing, you, the ask tonight would be is for us to consider to rezone this parcel of ground to commercial from residential. Correct. As I stated earlier, it was my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, that the township has been looking at rezoning this problem. Well, I, I think that if you're traveling uh, on 322 towards Route 1, yes, and once you get past Fellowship Drive, uh, I think on the right-hand side now you have the PennDOT salt storage facility. 
I think you're a little further up the road. You have Mr. Mikowski's business, which has been there for a long time, and Correct. it's existing on residential zoning, but it's a grandfather non-conforming use. Then you have this residential piece, and then you have the hotel. Correct. So in my opinion, personally, of any of the pieces are the orphan piece, it seems like this is the orphan to the zoning. We would agree. Um, I think, though, that um, council will have to you know, talk about this and uh, get back to you on it. Sure. I do appreciate you reiterating that it would also require a special exception at the zoning hearing board. All those meetings are public. Things such as buffering and uh, parking lot lights and things that are Lighting, nature, landscaping, Landscaping, yes. how the building's going to look. There's plenty of plenty of time to get to that. I think the charge that is being tasked to us right now is to consider whether we will rezone this to commercial. That correct? is correct. Okay. Any questions from anyone else? Um, just so so I'm clear, so the the total request then is not just the parcel in green, but the two parcels that sort of create a triangle. Yeah. Again, I don't want to speak that. for Mr. Mikowski. I know he's here. Um, as Mr. Pileggi referenced, he does have a commercial uh, mulch operation on there that's been grandfathered for, for several years. So I was just assuming the township might want to take that into consideration well, I, as well. John, I think we would talk to Mr. Mikowski to see what his wishes are, but I think it would seem the prudent thing to do or, or the right thing to do to do it in one fell swoop. But we, we, we'll have to talk about that as far as our sure. overall plan for what this is going to look like. And then with regard to um, timing, and um, Mr. Hanna mentioned the, there's a, a national consolidation um, underway. Is there, are there timing pressures that he is under with regard to um, either a requirement uh, to have this consolidation completed or else close the businesses, uh, you know, otherwise? Uh, what, what, can you give us a little bit more of a sense of, of sort of uh, if this were not to happen um, or what your time frame is that is required? Well, um, we had two years as of a year ago to, to zero in on a property. So as of this January 1st, we would have gone into bad standings with Harley Davidson if we would not have found this property to move to. So. By the second quarter of this year, they would have then started um, penalizing us by hold back money on every bike that we sold. And then probably by um, January 1st of next year, they would be looking to close us down. Not have found a place. So if we, we do well here and things are moving forward and it takes a year and a half, two years to get permits to break ground, everything's great. If not, then we'll have to find another parcel somewhere and they would give us a little bit of time. We've been around for a while. So. Okay. A question for uh, Mr. Hannum. Yes. Uh, do you have other uh, parcels uh, in consideration, or is this the only parcel you're looking at? Well, we've had quite a few in consideration. This is the one that we went back to. My sister likes it the most. I mean, it's clo it's close to home. Most, yeah, <laughs> so close to home for her. And we thought it was perfect. We had some places down near 95 and, and uh, a post store, a media store. But when this, we missed it the first time. It was under agreement with someone else, and then it fell through. And jumped right on it the second time around. This was our spot. Okay. I think what we'll do is we'll uh, consider this and we will either have um, Amanda or you get back to you and see what, what our thoughts are. Appreciate that, Mr. Pelleggi. One okay. thing I failed to mention was I know access is an important issue with yeah. regard to this development and I just wanted to make the board aware that access is planned at the signalized intersection, yes. not only for this proposed development, but Mr. Mikowski's in the future as well. So between, okay. between the two property owners, we think we can provide access okay. to that signal. All right, we have quite a full agenda. Thank you for coming out. More to follow. Thank you. Okay, going under old business. Nate, the update on Schoolhouse Lane and Baltimore Pike? Sure. Um, I think we've been providing periodic updates uh, regarding this intersection. Uh, the latest and greatest is I have currently um, waiting on quotes from our signal maintenance contractor to make the signal modifications at the intersection of Baltimore Pike and Cheney, as well as Baltimore Pike and Stony Bank. I've been, I'm expecting them literally any day. I'm hoping there'll be any day. If not, I might have the chairman make a phone call for me. Okay. Um, once we get those, I just need to talk to Chester Heights as the Stony Bank signal is shared, and then we'll get that work started. Once that work is started, then we will get the work done that um, closes that left turn out of Schoolhouse. Uh, same thing, I'm out right now with two contractors getting quotes. I will also get one from a third. Depending on the numbers and the bid quantities, we'll have to figure out how to execute that, but we're not gonna execute that until we complete the signal work. Um, and then last, what we will get started here in the near future is the southbound Baltimore Pike deceleration lane to allow you to turn northbound onto Schoolhouse. 
That'll be next on our list to get that designed this calendar year for installation next year. Um, so that is the update as of now on the Schoolhouse Baltimore Pike situation. Dave, does that answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> You've been asking, you prioritized everything else, and now you're going to start looking at that. No, 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 no,
Um, second, the other aspect that takes time is coordinating with the various utility companies. Uh, same thing regarding utility pole relocations. Uh, there's gas pipelines crossing it. So progress is slow in that regard. Um, I think, again, Amanda suggested that maybe I provide updates kind of on a monthly basis um, where I can on that so we can keep everybody updated. Uh, the design is essentially complete. We just got to get th through these two processes with PennDOT, okay. and then we can begin the right-of-way process. Thank you, Nate. I'm number three, Octorera Trail update. Octorera Trail, again, a project that had been stuck somewhat neutral. We finally broke loose uh, last week, so I have some great news that we were finally able to meet with PICO. Um, as I had mentioned in previous updates, yeah. PICO was working on a new yeah. trail policy. They have finalized that policy. Amanda and I met with them last week at their office, and while they have not given us the green light, they've given us, uh, we'll call it the yellow light, uh, where there are some, some feasible options where we can continue to use their easements and rights away. Um, so we're gonna have to do some redesign along with uh, some of the other utilities. So I think we're gonna be able to break that free and get that moving again now that PICO's been able to uh, have some conversations. Uh, unfortunately, for probably over a year, I see Representative Williams here, he's helped us as well. You know, we were waiting on getting that clarity from PICO and we finally got it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Plate Logic, uh, uh, Vanita had made that part of her report, so it'll be more to follow on that in upcoming months. Under new business, Resolution 19 of 2022, Minor Subdivision Concordville Hotel. Uh, Nate, do we have that to put up on the wall, or we don't need to, or what? Nate? Uh, yep, Lisa's pulling it up right now. Okay, we have some, uh, Mr. Kynette, good to see you. I know you're my neighbor across the street, but... And I you know, you know, there, I would be in favor out, out there plowing now. snow, cutting grass, and I don't do either. So, <laughs> you know, I would be, I would be in favor of the Harley Davidson deal. Oh yes, yes, I figured that. Yeah, yeah. If you could put a plow on one, you'd be in heaven. But <laughs> hey, uh, that's a little dangerous. Um, my name is is Ken Kynan. I'm the attorney representing the applicant, Conquerville Hotel Inc. I have here uh, Evan Pellegrino, who's the uh, project engineer, and I have uh, uh, Alec. Alex Hyonis is here, young Alex, and uh, Steve Angeli. Okay, when he comes in, everybody looks sad. No, he's gonna... <laughs> He'll come in with a little scowl. You'll think Please he's against the project. Um, I, I don't know if you need additional information. No, I think, I, Nate, you want to run through it real quick, yeah, and then we'll uh, probably just go right to a uh, sure, resolution. Sure, Ken, I, I, can, I can jump in here. Yeah, as, as Ken was mentioning, uh, obviously the Concordville Hotel site, uh, I think we're all intimately familiar and have been here many times over the years. Uh, this plan is simply, uh, there is no land development plan or no land development proposed. I wanna make sure I stress that there's been some confusion. All this plan does is modify existing property lines. Uh, the current property line I'm tracing on the screen here, slices kind of at an odd angle through the site here. The proposed property line is gonna follow essentially that hillside where the upper level of parking goes down to the lower level of parking and essentially bifurcates this site into the north part of the site where the, uh, the restaurant is, the south part of the site where the hotel is, and then a third site over here where uh, Marion's Produce Hut used to be and is currently vacant. So all this is is a change of the lot lines. Um, we've gone through the review process, we've worked with the Planning Commission, we've gotten comments from the county, the sewer department, et cetera, and uh, the Planning Commission is recommending approval uh, with a few conditions this evening. And okay. if there's any specific questions from council, I'd be happy to right. answer Res them. Take a stab at a resolution number 19 of 2022, final minor subdivision. Um, plan dated November 19th. Uh, Nate, you recited all the dates and the uh, everything else and what it's accomplishing. It is being approved under the sub following conditions. Number one, compliance with all comments contained in the Pannoni review letter dated March 18th, 2022. Copy attached to Exhibit A. Number two, compliance with all comments contained in the Delaware County Planning Commission review letter dated January 21st, 2022. Also attached as Exhibit B. Compliant number three, compliance with all comments contained in fire marshal uh, email dated March 11th, 2022, Exhibit C. Uh, number four, compliance with all comments contained in the township SEO December 13th, 2021, email Exhibit D. Compliance with Bradford Engineering Associates review letter March 21st, 2022, that's number five, would be Exhibit E. Number six will be plans to be submitted in electronic format acceptable to the township engineer. Number seven, all deeds for properties, legal descriptions, and or easements are to be submitted for review and approval by the township engineer and solicitor prior to the release of the signed plan, including all documents indicated within general note number 15 of the reference plan. Be approved subject to the following waivers. 16035B18, requiring a grading plan. 
16035B19 requiring a stormwater plan, and 16039C2 requiring the right of way of Baltimore Pike to be 120 feet. Okay, that's in the form of a resolution. Do we have a motion to approve that resolution? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Any questions or discussion? There was just a, a note that um, I believe uh, the owners are, are, are working on reseeding that area where there was the demolition, and so that, that is okay. to bring it into compliance as well. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Conditions acceptable to the applicant? Yes. That's when you say yes. Okay. <laughs> Well, anyway, thank you for coming out this evening. Thanks for your and Mr. <laughs> Mr. Kynette, if you could, you, Terry's over there, and you can have your applicant uh, client sign that they're in agreement with the conditions. Thank you. Okay, next is Resolution 20 of 22, a minor subdivision, Concord Township, 40 Beaver Valley Road. Uh, this is known as the Frail Zeckman property. I think, Nate, this is a property the township owns, and we are sort of carving it up where we, we're taking a line out to make it one property, correct? Correct. Yeah, this is, uh, we, we spoke earlier, uh, this is the Zeckman property with the historic Newland house that we purchased, uh, I believe, last year or two years ago. This is the, essentially the ruins. Uh, and then recently, this past year, we purchased what's called the Frail property. What this plan is proposing is a consolidation of these two properties um, into one property. That way, when, you know, if we look to make improvements, we've been talking about well, later on the agenda, uh, a grant for a pocket park. Um, it'll be a lot easier when we have this all as one party. So just something we do with a lot of these uh, open space parcels. Uh, Planning Commission, everybody's reviewed this. They made some recommendations with some minor conditions. Uh, fairly straightforward. And um, there is, a, the only thing I'll point out is there's an existing e license agreement right here for an existing shed that crosses the property uh, that's been executed with the property owner to the south. Um, and as we mentioned earlier, the fence along the southern property line has been installed. Uh, we still need to meet with the Jaroses to the south here, make sure we're all on the, on the same page here with that fence, but otherwise I think we're pretty close. So okay. uh, answer any questions you guys have. Resolution 20 of 20, 2022. Be, um, Nate recited the, uh, all the good stuff about it. Uh, approved subject to the following conditions. Number one, comments, compliance with all comments contained in Concord Township Sewage Enforcement Office or memo dated 321-22 attached as Exhibit A. Number two, compliance with all comments contained in the Concord Township Fire Marshal Memo dated March 11, 2022, Exhibit B. Number three, signed, sealed, surveyor, certification, a placement of monument, and pins shall be provided. Number four, plans are be submitted in electronic format acceptable to the Township Engineer. Number five, all historic ruins shall be indicated on the record plan. Number six, setback lines per the R3 zoning district shall be indicated on the plans. Number seven, the parcels are currently subject to the Concord Township Land Use License Agreement regarding a shed belonging to George Marlin of 97 Brandywine Street, Chads Ford, date of February 1st, 2022, number eight. Compliance with any pending comments from the Delaware County Planning Commission as deemed appropriate by the Township Engineer. Number nine, all conditions outlined in each agreement of sale. Number 10, all deeds for properties, legal descriptions, and or easements are submitted to the review and approval of the township engineer and solicitor prior to the release of the final plan. One waiver from 16035B14 requiring existing tree masses and notable trees. We have a motion to approve this resolution. So moved. We have a second. Second. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Resolution 21 of 2022 is an Act 537 plan revision, which is required for um, Sewers at 155 Governor Markham Drive. Do I have a motion to approve that resolution? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Resolution 22 and 23. Mr. Crossing, just want to go through them briefly. Yes. And so we'll both, ask for motions. Both of these are to apply for DCNR grants. Uh, one is to create a pocket park at the uh, property just mentioned, the Frail Zeckman property. Um, and then the second one is uh, for township park improvements at this uh, township park on Smithbridge Road. Okay, I guess we can do them in the form of one motion. Mr. Crossan has mentioned, do we have a second? We just take a second from one of you? Second. Okay, second, uh, Dana seconds both. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Next is the lease for the goats. The goats are coming to Concord. As mentioned previously, the 
famous Delco goats uh, in Upper Chai along 322 are relocating to Concord Township. Do we have to get them t-shirts and stuff? No. Uh, you know, this, this could be coming, but uh, we have before us uh, the, the ground lease uh, for uh, approximately three acres of land and the Wilson Palmer barn uh, located at Bush Hill Farm at 30 Bethel Road. Uh, the fence has been put up. Uh, the, uh, this is the lease agreement between Mr. Trapea and the township for keeping the goats, the 40 goats, as well as the three sheep uh, on the property. He found uh, alternate accommodation for the ponies, so they will not be coming to Concord. Uh, but we, we, we will see the goats and the sheep at our, at our community events. Uh, I'm out. And around town. <laughs> Um, and I move that we approve this lease subject to Mr. Trapea uh, obtaining all necessary insurance. Uh, this lease will begin on April 1st and run for 12 months. Okay. Uh, do we have a second? Second. Okay. <laughs> all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Damn, John. <laughs> that was good. Just yeah, just sitting there. That's great. subtle. Okay. Um, we had a email from, uh, I see our state rep here, Mr. Uh, um, Williams. Williams. <laughs> I was going to say Barrar, I had a brain lock there. But anyway, um, I think from Rachel's in his office of somebody requesting a speed study along Bethel Road. And Nate, what I understand a speed study is uh, we would have to ask PennDOT to come out and look at it and check the speeds. How does that work? Yep, uh, all it is is we, we send a letter to PennDOT if council authorizes us. Currently it's 40 miles an hour. PennDOT would look at it. They would then reduce it anywhere between 25 to 35 is my guess. Typically it comes back on this type of road. I could see it being 30, maybe 35. Okay. Uh, we as the township would then be required to install the speed limit signs at our own cost. Um, so just be aware of that, um, that there will be a cost associated with that. Well, I, I, I see uh, no problem from my end. Do we have a motion to approve that? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Any questions or discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Thanks, Craig, for having your office let us know about this. <laughs> um, we are in the process per DCNR. We need to establish a um, ad hoc grant committees for the first state connector trail feasibility study and the Bush Hill Farm master plan. We are not here to populate those committees tonight, but we do need a motion to establish those committees. So if I have a motion to do so. So moved. Do we have a second? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, Mr. Gillespie, I think, uh, no, we're going to authorize the advertisement for the bid and stone pointing and masonry repairs of the township building. Uh, this is a beautiful building we bought. It was built many, many years ago. and. Um, it's a, it's a massive stone building, and it needs some stone pointing and mason repairs uh, to keep it in its condition that it is. So we need a motion to authorize those bids for advertisement. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Mr. Gillespie, you're going to handle these next few, I think? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, I believe there's four of them. The uh, first one being the municipal building's cleaning service. Uh, I'll second. We have a recommended award for CNS Cleaning Company in the amount of $21,780. This is for weekly cleaning services of the township building and senior center buildings. All right, shall we do all four at one time? Yeah, do all four at one time, John. Yeah. And the second one being the PennDOT Green Light Go Grant, which is a an awarded uh, grant that the township received and involves upgrading five signalized intersections with the latest vehicle detection technology to improve signal responsiveness and reduce delay and queuing. Following intersections will be upgraded, Concord Road and Smithbridge Road, Namens Creek Road and Shavertown Road, Concord Crossing Lane, Smithbridge Road and Bethel Road, Station Road, Concord Road and Cheney Road, and number five, Naaman's Creek Road and Pyle Road. Once this work is complete, there will be no more loop detectors in Concord Township, which will be very, very good news. So we're recommending the award to go to Armour and Sons Electric in the amount of $149,000. Five bids were received, ranging from $149,000 to $183,360. That's in the form of a motion. Uh, well, they'll all be in the form of a motion, okay. Next one being the uh, community center. This is uh, 
the lower level renovations at the community center. The bidder has been verified and recommended by the architect. Improvements include flooring, ceiling work, painting, mechanical, electrical, and lighting. And the recommended award is to BSS Contractors LLC for $93,000, and they're located in West Grove, Pennsylvania. And finally, the road program, recommending an award to <coughs> AF Damon, Inc. for $472,737.80, the base bid plus alternates. And these streets include Pleasant Hill Drive, Concord Creek Road, Ward Creek Road, John Beale Drive, Smithfield Drive, Wrights Court, Robert Adams Court, Weeks Drive, Brinton Lake Road, from Spring Valley to Mainline Health Driveway, John Myers Circle, Matson Road, Thomas Drive, Shaw Circle, and Swain Court. So those are all in the form of a motion. Yeah, just to clarify on the road program award recommendation, um, it's going to be the base bid with all alternates except the public works parking lot. We are not going to complete that this year. I just want to make sure that's clear for the record. Okay. If I understand, that'll be completed at a later date. Correct. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Anybody? Second. Uh, any questions or discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Mr. Gillespie got a certificate for payment, I think. Uh, yes, yeah, certificate for payment number 1A and 1B to Able Fencing. This is the first certificate of payment for the fence contract bid that we awarded last month. So the recommendation includes two payment numbers, 1A for $11,021.40, which is paid by the township, out of township funds, and 1B of $8,424 for, six, for 620 Concord Road fencing, which will be paid by the sewer department. So they all include a 10% retainage. So there will be more payments to be made uh, as the contractor completes work at the AMA Church and Shetty Properties, which we talked about earlier that some of the work has already started, but we don't have a request for payment. So that's in the form of a motion. We have a second. Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 John, you got security yeah. releases, right? Yeah, we have uh, financial security releases for Astoria, number four for $6,761.25. And there's a balance of $201,795.05 after the release. And the second one would be for the Charian release, financial security release number one for $475,887.42 to Dr. Charian slash SD Capital Group was approved by the engineers and after there'll be a balance of $145,760.95, and they are in a form of a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Right, we have the following two plans uh, applications. We have a conditional use application for Premier A2 Chad's Ford LLC for a self-storage facility at 366 Baltimore Pike, West, West, Wilmington, Westchester Pike, I'm sorry. Um, that is on Route 202, the southbound lane. I think it used to be the old Logtown fence uh, establishment owned by the Greeners. And we also have a conditional use application for a car wash at the corner of Route 202 and 1 at the Exxon property um, called Cloud 10 Car Wash. So this is merely accepting these applications. There will be more to follow about hearing dates and so on. Do we have a motion to accept these applications? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Under other council matters, we did Harley Davidson. Mr. Crossan, you want to talk about 620 Concord Road, please? Thank you, Mr. President. So f at 620 Concord Road, this is the property that uh, the township purchased last year from Mitch and Dottie Garris next to St. John's Church. Uh, and the intersection of Concord Road and Cheney Road. Uh, it contained, it was about seven acres. It adjoins the Concord Township sewer plant. Um, and uh, as we stated at that time, uh, we purchased it with the intent to preserve all the land, uh, subdivide off the structures and resell those. So we have uh, since then sub um, subdivided the property with uh, about 3.9 acres remaining uh, with the <coughs> with the historic uh, house uh, 
barn and spring house, all of which are preserved via deed restrictions. And the land is uh, further preserved with deed restrictions preventing any further subdivision or development. And the front lawn area needs to remain in an open pasture-like setting. Uh, this, I'm moving that we engage uh, Weikert, Realties, uh, Weikert Realtors and uh, to put this property up for sale uh, as part of the spring market. Okay. Uh, the remaining land that was subdivided off will be uh, reverse subdivided into the township sewer plant at a future time, and proceeds from this sale will go to uh, the sewer department, which those funds were used to purchase this land. Yeah, so th we bought the ground, we carved out the house, we're going to put the house up for sale, deed restrict it, and the remaining ground will rem remain with the sewer department and is contiguous to the sewer department. Correct, and okay. ultimately all of this achieves our goals of preserving this land, uh, preventing uh, further development of it, uh, preserving the historic structures and view shed, all um, at uh, very little cost, if any, to the township, ultimately. Okay. That's in the form of a motion? Yes. Do we have a second? Yeah, I'll second that. Okay. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, Mr. Crossman, you got this, we got this big thing, this open space thing we just got? Or open something? space plan. If you have some time <laughs> and want to spend a lot of time reading a lot of detail, it's good stuff. Uh, we, as we all know, we've been very busy um, purchasing open space, allocating funds for open space, um, and we have, uh, our draft is of our new open space plan, uh, comprehensive plan is ready for review. It is being reviewed by council, um, our um, volunteers and staff, and will be available for public review and comment uh, within a couple of weeks here in April before we adopt it at a future meeting. Um, and so I encourage everyone on council to review that, make any comments, um, and then we will go ahead and get those updates incorporated and release it to the public. Okay, thank you. Upcoming township meeting events, April 7th, Park and Rec Board meeting. April 9th, we have two events. We have the Recycling Day and Tree Giveaway, which is at the township garage uh, at, on Smithbridge Road between 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. And then immediately following, we have the Easter egg hunt over at the uh, 40 Bethel Road site, uh, Bush Hill Farms. Mm -hmm. okay, I get it. okay, April 18th is the Planning Commission meeting. April 20th is the Zoning Hearing Board. Also, April 20th is the Historic Commission meeting. April 23rd, I think it was mentioned earlier, there's a bird watch, nature walk, small book sanctuary. Um, you're gonna, registration is required. If you go to the website, you'll get more information on that. April 26th is our council agenda meeting, if needed. Motion to adjourn, please. Second. 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 All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Thanks for coming out. Good meeting.